I'm going to cover the generation of a negative externality in a perfectly competitive market and why a perfectly competitive market might fail. We know that typically under perfect competition we get the highest welfare, but this isn't the case necessarily when we have a negative externality. So something like pollution that's generated that has a negative effect on another party, like a third party, not directly involved in this transaction. So to see this, we take a diagram in the textbook by Perloff, by the publishers Pearson, and we see that a perfectly competitive market will operate where demand, market demand, equals marginal private cost or supply at this equilibrium of 105 and a price of 240. This is the marginal cost of the negative externality that's generated in the process, and we see that Paper production goes hand in hand with the negative externality. So as more papers produced, more pollution or negative externality, textbook calls it gunk, is produced. So the marginal cost of your externality or the pollution rises with increased output of paper. Your private marginal cost ignores that externality cost. If we were to add to your private marginal cost, the cost of this externality, this whole curve would pivot up and we get your social marginal cost, which is your private marginal cost plus the cost of the externality. And where that social marginal cost intersects your demand curve, we get the social optimum, output of 84 and a higher price of 282. So we see that the social optimum is actually associated with a lower level of output and a higher price because of taking the externality into account. So we'd actually prefer less output because it means less pollution. We can see this if we analyze the various components of welfare. So under the perfect competitive equilibrium, if you leave the market alone and only private marginal cost is taken into account, where your supply and private marginal cost intersects your demand, we get that initial equilibrium price of 240. What is your consumer surplus? It's going to be the area below your demand curve and above your price line, areas A, B, C, and D. What is your producer, private producer surplus going to be? It's going to be the area below your price line and above your private marginal cost curve, areas F, G, and H. But that ignores, FG&H ignores the cost of the externality. You should, to get the true social producer surplus, you should take this FG&H and subtract off the externality cost. And the, what is the externality cost? It's the distance between these two curves, up until the output produced. So we can see that it's going to be the externality cost is area G, C, D, H, and E. Up until what's produced, the distance between those two curves. So if we take this amount um, and we, we, we subtract that from our initial producer surplus of FGH, take FGH, subtract this, this whole area, we'll get your true social producer surplus. And when you add that to consumer surplus, you get an idea of welfare. And you'll see that in the table in Perloff um, below this, it, it, it shows you that area. We can then compare that welfare with the welfare under the, the social optimum, where the social marginal cost intersects your demand curve. Output of 84, price of 282. What would consumer surplus be? It would simply be area A, the area below the demand curve and above the price line. Private producer surplus would be the area above your private marginal cost curve, below the price line, up until what's produced. So it would be area B, C, F, G. Up until what's produced, the area below the price and above the private marginal cost curve. So B, C, F, and G. Subtract off the externality cost. Up until what's produced, it's going to be area G and C. The distance between these two curves. Up until what's produced is G and C. So if you take B, C, F, and G, take off C and G, we get left with... B and F. Another way to see that is it's the area below the price line and above your social marginal cost gives you area B and F. And if you add areas A and B and F, 
you get your social welfare associated with this equilibrium. And if you do that and you follow the table, you'll see that the only difference in welfare between these two outputs is area E. And area E represents a dead weight loss. It's kind of the opposite of the dead weight loss you saw when we compared perfect competition with monopoly. We saw it was the dead weight loss because monopoly produced too little. But in this instance, this dead weight loss is associated with too much production. Why? Because more production comes with more pollution, unfortunately. So it's optimal if you restrict that output. How could we achieve that? You could have a standard. Government could introduce a standard at this level. So you can't, producers can't produce more. Or alternatively, you could have a tax causing the private marginal cost to pivot up. So long as you get that tax right, like a specific tax correct at the social optimum level, this distance here, th that tax will work and it'll bring about the social optimum. We can also see from this that for society, we might argue that we don't want any production of paper because then you'd have no externality, no pollution. But we, because we value paper, the optimum is not going to be zero production. We always want some amount of production, but uh, too much is also not a good thing.